back to the positional breakdowns, man, because uh, news is coming in hot and heavy, man. News is coming in hot and heavy. Let's start with the point guards, the most important position right now for this Knicks team. Uh, obviously, you have Lonzo Ball, the hot candidate right now, coming out of New Orleans. It's said that New Orleans is probably not going to match any deal that Lonzo gets on the open market, so looks like he's he's going to be a goner. You have campaign, the resurgent campaign coming off of a uh, NBA Finals trip as a backup point guard with the Suns. Mike Conley Jr., the age-old veteran coming from the Utah Jazz. Kyle Lowry of the Raptors and Reggie Bullock of the LA Clippers. These are our top five point guards from KnicksFanTV.com. Now, the rumors right now are that couple on, on a couple of these guys um Lonzo Ball is rumored to be getting ready to sign a deal hang on CK sign a deal with the Chicago Bulls you have Kyle Lowry who's being rumored to be going to the Miami Heat now we left Chris Paul off this list because it didn't seem like a realistic possibility you never know well, Chris Paul today it was announced that he declined his uh, his player option with the Suns, but it's likely he'll get he'll get more of a long term deal. Um, CK, I'll start with you, man. Lonzo's your guy, bro. H- how are you reacting to this, and uh, what's Plan B for you? It is Zoda NY until he signs the dotted line. So I am a hundred percent all in, hoping that that he, it is still an option for us. But like you just mentioned, though, to be real, I feel like even including Lonzo Ball, you know, ha ha he he aside, it looks like there's only two dudes on this list because I feel Kyle Lowry is about done. I don't think Mike Conley truly leaves Utah. I, I would love to well, take that well, shot. Well, it was also reported yesterday that Conley is likely to stay with the Jazz. That's why that what I say. Well, I don't know what yeah. I say, but yeah, Mike Conley. That's what I'm saying. I think I think I'm pretty sure he's going to be staying. So to me, I look at this list and I see Cameron Payne and I see Reggie Jackson and. Uh, Though in another lifetime, in a different uh, light, you know, in a different what variant or whatever uh, was on Loki, you know, maybe I would look at Reggie Jackson on this team. But right now we need a guy to start at point guard. We don't need another rental. We don't need a a guy where I feel like he would be a great backup. Um, You saw him give some great minutes in the playoffs for the Clippers. But even throughout the season, right before the playoffs, you can see that he was up and down, up and down. Um, He he definitely turned it on at the right time, but I don't know if I'm spending money on that off of a playoff run. Uh, It's so hard for me to look at this list and say that I want to bring in any of these guys. Like, I know beggars can't be choosers, uh, but to be completely real with you, and I know it don't help, I want to go after Get, give me back Derrick Rose, and I will test my luck running this thing with Deuce yeah. McBride before uh, spending any money on these guys. You know, we got a, a big free agency coming next year. Um, you know, I, I, I just – I feel like we'd be overpaying. Uh, I know Spencer Dinwiddie's not on this list. That's definitely a yeah. guy I'm looking now, it's at. It's not an exhaustive list. And for people in the yeah. chat, you know, people are like, where's THT? I mean, THT's right, right, not, right. not in the top five. We just, yeah, we just put just, our top just, five out there. A hundred percent. So just looking at this list, definitely I'm I'm not giving up hope on Lonzo Ball, even though signs are looking one way. That's definitely the guy I'm looking at. But other than that, I I, I don't know. I just can't tell myself go spend money on Reggie Jackson to be your starting point guard. I, we just saw that in Detroit. Yeah. We saw it in Clippers. He's 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 a good. He's going to be a solid backup. He's going to be that guy's going to have those moments. I just don't know if I want to give him that starting money. And campaign's been great, but I'm not all in on the campaign to make campaign my starting point guard. Starting That's it. Al, how how you feeling, man? You know, I'm with CK. I want Alonzo Ball here. I think he's the best out of all these guys at the point guard option. Helps you in transition. Helps you with rebounding. Helps you with just a bunch of things that we're that the Knicks don't even do, especially in the transition. So I would like to have him on. He's also improved his game from shooting. He's a good three point shooter at this point. His mid range game, the in between, he can still work on. It's a little inconsistent, but he's he's going in the right trajectory to show that he's improving as a player. So I would like to have him. Obviously, we know about the rumors, as you mentioned, CP, that the Bulls look like the most likely team to to get Lonzo and sign to that max deal, of whether, whether it's be 20, 25 million annually for four years. So he may be out, but we also know Connolly's out. Lowry, you know, if we can get Lowry, that would be probably the, the next best option. Right. For campaign and Reggie Jackson, I would be okay with both of those guys. I look at them as more of like a temporary point guard. Either way, we're going through a temporary point guard with any of these guys, unless it's Juanzo Ball, any of these options that we really have out there, unless we're talking about Spencer Dinwiddie, who who we could then say, okay, maybe he could be the long-term point guard option. Most of these guys are just temporary. They're here. They're here as placeholders to help 
you know, groom the next point guard, whether it's Deuce McBride or whoever we get in the system. But these guys are supposed to be that steady shit, that steady hand that you need that gives you the leadership for these young guys like Julius Randle, RJ Barrett. So that's what you're looking for. Un- you don't get that with campaign because one, he's having his bounce back career. But I think for him, you can just take that flyer, say, all right, you can intrigue him saying, hey, you want to come to the big market? You want to come be the lead point guard? Let's see if you could take your game up to another level because he is quick. He is decisive in his playmaking. I like the way he plays defense. He's very tenacious. He's always closing out. He's rotating very quickly. And he's got a quick first step. I like the way he finishes like around the rim. He's very efficient just how he plays. He's not taking excess amount of shots, but he's just taking just the right amount of shots to keep the keep the defenses honest so i would give him that chance saying all right let's do a one two year let's do a two-year deal you know make the second one a team option or even do a three-year deal make the third year a team option see what he can do see if he can take his game to another level i know it's a risk but i think you can get him on a cheaper deal on a more team friendly deal and you can just run away with it and see what happens as for reggie jackson we saw that you know, he provides that same thing we asked from Alec Burks, which is just isolation. He was one of the top isolation scorers in the league. I, I forget where he ranked, but he's, but he, especially in the play, I think in the playoffs, he was like top three of all the guys who were in there. So, you know, that if you need a bucket, he's not afraid to go get that big bucket and go take it. You need some of those guys. And in the starting lineup where we didn't have that last season, once again, this is a temporary option. I would take him and just run with it for two years, see what you can get. Have him just be that steady hand for what you can get out of him. I know he's not the most steady. I know he's not the most steady guard that is out there. We saw what happened in Detroit. Granted, he was injured. That team just wasn't built for success with everyone. So it's partially, it's partially on him. It's partially on the organization. It's partially on the team around him. So yeah. I'd be willing to give him another chance and see what he can do because he is just that three level score that this team could need. Sure, and he, he's he's a solid defender. He's not great. He's not the worst, but you'll get some solid defense. So I have all those guys. I think it's not bad to go with either campaign or Reggie Jackson. It's just two different tracks and two different thought processes. JD, what are you thinking, bro? <clears throat> this is the presser, man. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you telling, bro? And the reason I say that, CP, it's tough, bro, and, and, and Knicks fans is I wouldn't want to be a GM in this offseason with the Knicks. It's just when you look at the list, there is – intriguing options but there's just no one guy that i say yes you have to give up it doesn't matter if we have to overpay that's the guy that it's a definite you i don't have that you know do you go with reggie jackson is is his playoff performance a fluke and the other question is does he make players around him better is he a guy that would maximize rj and ob and quickly that's a question mark then you go to larry do you give larry a long-term deal um is the, the Chris Paul's performance, will that translate to a Larry who's who's just as, you know, he's 35, 36. Yeah. So Conley, another thing, likely he stays in Utah. But if you were to go that route, he has taken a little step back defensively with age and injury. So you deal with that campaign. You can't you can't sell me that you're bringing campaign here as a starting option. You know, um, he was a guy that was playing with Chris Paul. Was that? Is he one of those situations when I brought up Noel, a player that was in the right system, around the right culture, around the right personnel, and he was able to maximize his opportunity? Don't know if that will happen here. And then with Lonzo, I mean, listen, Lonzo was improving his shooting percentages. He's He's been ascending in terms of that apartment, uh, department steadily. He shot 42% on the corner threes last year, which is something that fits the Tom Thibodeau system. Yeah. But then... You know, again, is he enough of a point guard that attacks the basket that would be the solution um, here? I would probably take the risk on Lonzo because of age, because there's still potential there. Um, And, you know, with better coaching and a stable culture, maybe you get more out of him. So if I had to go with someone on this list, I would probably go. Lonzo Ball well, it don't, on the don't even have to be on this list. I mean, who, who's your pick? If you want, if you could pick your starting point guard right now, based on it could be it could be anybody, right? Could whoever's on the free agency list. Is there a trade you're looking for? These are these are just the top five who who we think would fit within the next round. But who who would you go with? Man, they, I don't know, man. Dejounte Murray. So uh, you would try to Dame, get a trade for Murray? Amen. I would probably I would probably go with a Dejounte Murray. 
to be Close honest with you. Um, yeah, th- that's probably where I would go. Um, and, and the other reason I would go with him, look at his contract. He has a very, very manageable contract at a very great young age. Um, long arms, can play defense. Yeah, I like uh, that. And he, he has a lot of upside still. And they drafted Joshua Primo. They have Derek White. There's a, I think the Spurs organization is trying to see where they're going to head here. But yeah, I would go with him. Dinwiddie, he's not efficient enough to my liking. Yeah. Um, and you do have the injury risk. And Dame, we all know about that contract and what it would take to get him. So this is why I wouldn't want to be a GM this yeah, offseason. It's tough. So, yeah. I, I think the the one thing that that where the Knicks will be in an advantageous situation is um, you know, I think you're going to see a lot of balloon deals again, like you saw when they brought in Morris. I think, especially with where Dinwiddie's concerned, I think they could bring him in on a show me type of deal where they give him the bag that he's looking for for one de- for one year and then a partially guaranteed contract on the second year, kind of like a show me deal. You bring him in. I mean, listen, this this was a guy at his peak that, that gave you 20 and 6 on a season for the Nets. You know, he's a guy that at full strength, yeah, he's not the most efficient, but in the clutch, he can come through for you. And, and he's another guy that can go get you a bucket when uh, when you want to take that pressure off for Julius. And, and if you're not so uh, confident that RJ can get it for you, you know, that's one thing we know that from seeing how many times then when he killed the Knicks. So I think then when he could be an option, man. And now now the rumors are that um, the Nets are going to try to get a sign and trade because they're going to try to get some assets back here for him. And Washington has been the hot name right now for Dinwiddie potentially trying to get uh, Montrez Harrell back in in a deal. We'll see what happens there. But um, from what Ian Begley had reported, there is a team outside of the Knicks that's ready to give Dinwiddie a bag. Who that is, he didn't say. But uh, I think it could be the Wizards. I think it could be the Wizards. So I think Dinwiddie's prime destination right now is the Wizards. So where does that leave the Knicks? I like Lonzo. Again, I, I've, I've said it several times. I think Lonzo can help this team. You know, his half-court offense, we'll, we'll see, you know, how that would translate with, with this current roster. But there's certainly other areas. As you said, J.D., the corner three is very proficient. His shooting has increased over last year. Uh, transition, I think he'd be excellent for us, especially playing with R.J. in the backcourt. Defensively, he'd give us something as well. So I think, you know, Lonzo definitely ticks off a lot of boxes. Is he that dribble penetration attack the rim guard that Tibbs wants? And how does Tibbs feel about it in the in the sense that how much are they willing to pay Lonzo to to to, to for him to fill that role that he is right now? And, think, and you you know who we forgot is probably yeah. just thought about it, Colin Sexton. Yeah. Colin Sexton's probably yeah, Sex, yeah, know. Sexton's certainly an option. I think the Sexton is certainly an option. Um <laughs> The Schroeder thing is 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 uh, we intentionally try not no to mention. Said I try not name to purpose, say it. I try not to say no it, fellas. No one said his name on purpose. I try Dude. not to say it, fellas. Mm-hmm. But man, because Schroeder's market is shrinking, and you know he's looking for 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 hundred mil. I don't think the Knicks would do it, but he could be an option. That's why his man. market is shrinking. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He could be he an option, himself. man. He could be a. Che- they could get Schroeder on a deal, and I would not be surprised, bro. I know a lot of people don't like it. I'm not in love with it. You know, one thing about Schroeder, he's gonna get to the rim. He does do that. Well, Lonzo doesn't. He's gonna draw fouls. He's gonna. He's gonna put pressure on the rim. He's he's pretty good in the mid range. Turnover prone. Very erratic. All of that. I don't like that about him. Yo, Schroeder, <laughs> don't Yo, sleep. Listen, man. All he's I'm saying take, is don't he's sleep. He's gonna take bro. over the. What is it? He's going to take the torch from Frank. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, all I'm saying is don't sleep on a potential Schroeder play here, man. It's not. So, so let me ask you this, yeah. CP. Yeah. Some of these guys we have up here, there's already, as we speak here on the show, there's already reports on where they may land. Mm-hmm. So the list starts dwindling. Yeah. So you have Schroeder or you have a trade for Sexton, right? Are you giving up some assets for Sexton, say yeah. Obi, and a pick, right? Maybe they they made this trade with trying to add a different um, additional asset, maybe mm-hmm. for a Sexton trade, maybe for a Dane trade. But do you go that route or do you give Schroeder $100 million? So, like, what would be more valuable, overpaying for a Schroeder yeah. or giving up uh, Obi for Sexton? Come on, man. I'm not, I'm not overpaying for Schroeder at all. 
Come on, man. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I would hope, again, if they're going to give him a balloon deal, a, a one plus one, because his market is dwindling, he may not be able to get a four-year deal from anybody. So the Knicks could. It could be advantageous for them. Again, you give him a, a one-year you know, deal at, at, at 25 and then a partially guaranteed on the next. I think that'll put him in a good situation. For Sexton, I mean, do I want to give up Obi per se? Not necessarily. But it's, it's a move that I think should be on the table. I think if they can get Brogdon, he's another guy that I would like. I know he's, he's injury prone, but he's another guy I would like, man. Um, but if I had to choose between going to get Sexton or pay, overpaying Schroeder, I'd go get Sexton. I, yep. I would go get Sexton and take, and take the risk there. Um, you know, because Schroeder, listen, he, he's decent, but that's, that's just not the, the way I would go. You know, that's, that's just not the way I would go. And, and I always question when players – get a get a major opportunity to play with with a guy like lebron um and play in a market where you have a lot of pressure and then you don't perform um I, i'm very wary about that because yeah. you're talking about a laker franchise and market you're coming to new york it's not it doesn't get any easier here in the microscope you can even say it gets much higher in new york so and then you're you're paying the guy three four year contract i know he's a little young but yeah uh, I, I mean, here's I, I the thing. Here's the thing. You know, we, we can't look at these moves as like, this is it. You could very right. well go get Schroeder, go get Sexton, and flip him for Damon in a year. You never know, right? Because of all the uh, all the draft picks that they've accumulated and having these guys, it would behoove them to, to play them. Hopefully they play well. And you take them and flip them. You know, you, you flip them in, in a Dame trade. But right now, with the guys that we have on this roster, people are throwing Vildoza's name in the chat. Forget Vildoza's not starting Come on, on this team. McBride, yeah. key, Tibbs is not giving the keys to McBride open at night. You know, IQ, I don't think they, they wouldn't, they're they not going to start IQ at the at the point right now. Tibbs is, Tibbs is going to go vet while these guys come along. He's going to go vet. Yeah. The only way I see IQ starting is if they somehow got Kawhi and maybe another wing, like the whole poor George Kawhi right, thing, right. where you just you allocate so much money to two wing players or two other positions that you don't have enough to fill out the roster. Then in a scenario mm-hmm. like that, I could see them saying, well, we have two superstars here. You know, we'll we'll go with the young player at point guard. Other yeah. than that, I don't see it. And that's why I, I, Sexton, to me, is the biggest high risk, high reward, because of what you mentioned, you get them now at – 22 years old you see why you see the lakers now they want they're interested in burks and bullock you see noel potentially getting yeah. the bag in other words this system and this environment thibodeau increased the value of the current players we sure. just got them on the one-year deal and now it's difficult to keep all of them so you bring sexton in you boost his value and then you have a decision to make you either pay him or you flip him that's right and, and those, those are certainly options on the table man so uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that breaks free. But um, my prediction, I, I think it could come down to Dinwiddie and Dinwiddie and Schroeder, man. I'm telling come you. Come on, CP. I think come it could on, down, man. down to Dinwiddie and Schroeder. I'll just be realistic. If Lowry's going to, it seems like Lowry's, Miami's angling to go get Lowry, right? They just signed Goran Dragic today, and it seems like that's going to be used in a signing trade. So it seems like the Lowry stuff is gaining steam to, to Miami. You got Lonzo potentially going to the Bulls. Conley's going back to Utah. I think Reggie Jackson will ultimately stay with the Clippers, you know, based on the fact that, uh, you know, they took the chance on him. Him and Paul George are cool. I think there's a good chance. They, yep. they, you, you're likely going to see Kawhi Leonard probably rehabbing the whole year. I think they'll yep. keep Reggie Jackson. Mm-hmm. Um, yo, the options are slim, bro. And if D, if D Rose is, is going back to Chicago, I, I, don't, I don't know where else they're going to go get a guy. I'm talking about a frontline starter. Yes, you can go get a THT. Yes, you can go get a McConnell and so on and so forth. Yeah, they're, they're, there's a lot of other guys down the list. I'm talking about a front-line starter. I'm talking about a front-line starter, bro. It would have to be through a trade if we're going to get a true front-line starter. It would have like to be through a trade. Colin Sexton. And, you know, even with the trades that we made during, you know, draft night, these are assets where you may not even necessarily have to include Obi or another – or yeah. OB, you just use them to go get Colin Sexton because if the Cavs are serious about moving him, his market is dwindling. This is the last year of his contract. They're not going to just let him right. walk. They don't have to make that trade now. We don't have to see that trade now if they do want to do it. They can wait until the deadline where his value will probably be – that it might be the lowest at that point considering that no other point guard gets injured during the season mm-hmm. and no one else can or is intrigued by Colin Sexton. Another guy we could put out there is Shea Gilgis-Alexander because – 
you know, OKC, shout out to Corey Tellable, who was on my pod, yeah. dra- said OKC was going to draft him and that they did. So, you know, OKC is another team that likes to, to penny pinch. They like to make sure their bag, uh, their money is under the cap. So mm-hmm. he could be available as well. Um, that could be another, you know, trade option where we have assets to move uh, yeah. to get him. Thanks. Do you think you think they move? I mean, you have to move a lot to go go get him. I would love to yeah, get him. Obviously, asking I would love price to get him. Be big for asking SGA. price is going to be big for SGA. For and, sure. and, you're, and you're dealing with Presti, so you know you're giving up all your first round picks from mm-hmm. now to the next decade. Yeah, so. facts. <laughs> and that mm-hmm. that's the thing. I think they're saving it for bigger fish. I think they're saving it for a bigger fish. Zach Lowe said it on on the Bobby Marks podcast. On me and on the Zach Lowe podcast with Bobby <clears> Marks, <throat> he said uh, he wasn't ready to divulge what it was going to be, but he feels like they're going to make a move. When it's going to be, yeah. I have no idea. But he feels like what they did in the draft and and what he's hearing, he feels like you know it, it's for something big. And you then know. you see the report. Uh, there's a report recently while we are on that. The Heat are preparing a sign and trade offer with Goran and Precious Achua. Right, for Lowry. He's deemed as yeah, they a. They flip that for Lowry. They flipping that for Lowry. Yeah, and it's like that. I mean, Achua, I would think, is a, is a nice piece, it's a nice, nice piece. young asset. So you already see, you know, Nick fans, what, you know, and I, and I kept telling people, like, yo, this is a new, this is a modern NBA business. Like, a lot of these yeah. players are going to get paid. Yeah. <laughs> and you, got, you might see some prices out there, some deals. That you know just shakes your head, but this is the way it is, and and this is why, as you mentioned, Schroeder could be a viable option in the end, and see what happens. You got, you got but I like what you, what you said. Go ahead, TK. No, I was just gonna say to end it off. But I like what you said. Just keep your eye on that Dejounte Murray um, thought process because I, I, I they, I'm hearing a lot of things about how they're. Really high on this Josh Primo guy because after that draft pick and after our reactions, to. I had to look into that some more and see what other, yeah. what like San Antonio writers and stuff like that. And they seem really high about that. So it really feels like they're trying to, you know, uh, move forward. Maybe it's Derek White, but, but Derek White and DeJounte are available. Phone call could be made. So I just want to. Yeah. Want us to pay attention to that one for Got sure. To. Shout out Michael Parker in the chat. Sent a super chat. He says Lonzo makes the most sense, both fit wise and money wise. He could come in right away and make and and uh, immediately pay dividends. Shout out Bailey Monin checking in from Australia. He says hey. uh, sign the Australian goat, Patty Mills. <laughs> hey, FIBA Patty Mills would be a problem. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm hearing that uh, Lakers are interested in Patty Mills. So. We'll, we'll see what uh, we'll see what happens there. But leave us your point guard prediction. Who do you want to run the point? Start at the point for the Knicks in the 2021-22 season. Leave it in the in the chat. 